the mighty forests of the Northeast, the hardwoods of New York, the maples of Massachusetts, the Green Mountains, the White Mountains, the Maine Woods. There's a chain of life linking a tree growing in Brooklyn to a tree in Acadia National Park, Maine, and every tree in between. And all of it is at risk. What powerful force could fell those mighty timbers? Invasive foreign pests like the Asian longhorn beetle. It turned up in a stand of maple trees in Worcester, Massachusetts in the summer of 2008. More ominously, scientists think it may have been quietly spreading for more than a decade. If left unchecked, this invasive pest could cause New England as we know it to disappear. But the battle for the trees is not one-sided. Having uncovered the beetle's devastation, the people of Worcester are fighting back and winning. By the summer of 2009, over 25,000 trees have been cut down and ground to pieces to exterminate the beetle. 66 square miles of the Worcester area have been quarantined. People are scanning the trees looking for new infestations. Life in Massachusetts' second largest city has been transformed practically overnight. Worcester, Massachusetts could be almost anywhere. It's got quaint neighborhoods with large, comfortable homes, small bungalows, triple-deckers. It's a hub of industrial manufacturing in New England, home to more than a dozen colleges and universities. It has hospitals, sports teams, a bustling downtown. Worcester is part big city, part small town, home to families, young people, seniors, and now, a foreign invasive pest. I was born in Worcester. Uh, my folks were born in Worcester, so I guess um, I would be considered a Worcesterite. You gotta be like two, three generations to be really Worcester. I married a Worcester man and I moved to Worcester and I've been living here the rest, all the rest of my life. I love Worcester. It's a nice community. My father and his siblings were raised in the Worcester area. And then I was born at Worcester City Hospital, which no longer exists. I grew up here in Worcester. I went to public schools, uh, K through eight, oldest of five kids. All of us live in the city and pretty uh, close proximity to my parents. So Worcester is, is home for uh, on third generation now. I grew up here in the Burncoat area of Worcester. I commuted to Holy Cross College. I got married and bought the house next door to my parents' house. Well, I think people in Worcester really value um, the whole quality of life issue. Neighborhoods are so important to us. And there's a certain character to these neighborhoods. Each neighborhood has its own character. New England, of course, is, is famous for its fall foliage. Uh, the maples were fantastic in that the different breeds of maples all changed slightly different colors and they changed at different paces. And they were just tree-lined streets. Uh, that was part of what Worcester is all about. It was a, a tree city. We were proud of that. You know, it, it kept the neighborhood together. It was all part of the fabric that kept it together. When you drove down our side streets, there'd be, there was a canopy of big maple trees in most parts of the city that just covered the whole road. So it was a shaded tunnel, and it was very comfortable and very beautiful. People felt like they had space of their own. My husband had a friend over after work, and uh, he said, look at this bug we found on the car. Well, I said, wow, what a pretty bug, but what is it? After a while, I saw another one, and one landed on my husband's leg. And I, I just said, you don't know anything about this bug. Why would you allow it to be on your body? 
And they laughed at me, of course, and I said, no, I'm serious, you know? And then I started thinking about my grandchildren to play in the yard. I went on the internet through hundreds of pictures, hundreds. So I went a few more pages. The only marking that would really stand out, it was that beautiful blue shine to this bug. And I said, that's the one. And then I got a name for it, Asian Longhorn Beetle. I said, okay, it's a beetle. Let me see now what this beetle is all about. And it said, call the government. So now I have everybody laughing at me like, you're gonna call the government and tell them you found a bug? And I said, but it tells you to do it. So then, because I'm just crazy Donna, I said, um, you know what, yeah, I am. And if they say, no big deal, then so be it. It was a Friday afternoon, it was August 1st, and I was at work, and I got a phone call from Donna Massey, a resident in Worcester, and she said she thought she had Asian longhorn beetle. And I explained to her what I had seen and that I was pretty convinced that we had Asian longhorn beetles here. She seemed very concerned that this really was the pest. So Patty Douglas and Jen Foreman came out. And I even remember we were standing right here and she said, I don't see this beetle. And I pointed up and said, right there. And she said, oh my God, that's them. And within five seconds, I knew this was Asian longhorn beetle. You know, I just could see. She just went, it's them. There were beetles on the tree. I could see oviposition sites, which are the egg-laying sites of the beetle. And Donna pointed out some round exit holes. And we were able to look up in the tree. She was able to point out um, probably half a dozen beetles between about three or four trees. And it was truly, it was amazing. I knew at that point that uh, my professional life was going to change. So that Saturday I collected some of the insects and one day I FedEx samples off to our entomologist in Washington, D.C. We had already started the ball rolling to get the city, state, and other federal officials in for a meeting on Wednesday here in Worcester. The process that we do use for going through our strategic plan is founded on a lot of science. And now that we are the fifth infestation in North America, we do have a lot of knowledge base and a lot of science that we can back this up on. After we get the call that something's out there, we do come to confirm it. After we find that that is the case, we set up an incident command structure where we can move people in almost immediately. You cannot waste any time because time is of the essence. Okay guys, heads up. We're looking for signs of the damage from the beetle on the actual trees. So because of that, we bring out climbers. We bring out people to, uh, to survey from the ground with binoculars. We have people out there just looking, bucket trucks as well. They're looking for the emergence holes that are about 3 eighths an inch in size coming out of the tree, which are very noticeable. Then we're also looking for the egg pits, the oviposition pits where the female will chew in before laying an egg. We got our game plan together. We figured out what our uh, first steps are in this situation, which is to determine how widespread this infestation is. And so that requires survey. And our survey tools really are visual surveys. It involves people, boots on the ground, walking the neighborhoods, walking in people's yards, visually inspecting every host tree on their property to see if there are any signs of Asian longhorn beetle. I initially did some surveying probably the first week. It was an eye-opener to me to go to just about every tree that we saw and find that every single one had signs of Asian longhorn beetle. Well, Donna Massey did what um, I would have hoped I would have done. She not only saw that there was a devastation happening to her tree, she decided to capture the, uh, the insect and then go to the authorities. Everyone doesn't do that. Most people today don't want to get involved. Thanks to Donna, we got a shot here. We got a shot to do it and do it right and bring back uh, even even Worcester's canopy. So, a tip of the hat to her. We don't know exactly how Asian longhorn beetle got to Worcester, but judging from the pattern of infestation, uh, it seems likely that the that the beetle came in into the industrial heart of the city along I-190 and the railroad. It was probably a shipment of some raw material to one of the, one of the plants in that area, 
and the beetle emerged, looked around, plenty of maple trees here in Worcester, plenty of maple trees along I-190, uh, and it spread from there. The Asian longhorn beetle is native to uh, East Asia, Japan, Korea, China. It came to the United States as trade with those countries increased, and in particular, as we started using containerized shipping, and to get things into the containers, use pallets, wooden platforms that the things sit on, use wooden crates. Our trees are closely related to the trees of East Asia, and the bugs that come out of those pallets quickly find a home. Wooden crates and pallets from other countries were not required to be treated to kill pests in the early to mid-1990s, which is when the Asian longhorn beetle is thought to have arrived in Worcester. Since then, government regulations and industry practices have tightened significantly in an effort to keep invasive pests out of the United States. The Asian longhorn beetle program that's evolved over the past 13 years has been science-based. We have a lab on Cape Cod. It's our Center for Plant Health Science and Technology. And the scientists there run a quarantine facility where they study uh, various aspects of the Asian longhorn beetle and emerald ash borer. And they have worked hand in hand with the leadership of this project to come up with the uh, best practices for managing and eradicating this pest. I think our role as part of the USDA is to be the first scientist on the ground developing ways of controlling exotic insects and excluding them from entering the country. We try to develop methods to detect these pests when they come into the country. If they do come in and we find them, we need methods of controlling them. We maintain a colony of Asian longhorn beetles to develop attractants that we can use to trap them. And then we uh, also study their behavior. How to control the insect, how to go about trying to detect it. The uh, Worcester infestation hasn't been totally aged yet, but our best guess is that it's been there for at least 12 years and probably 15 years. In that time, we've learned a lot about its biology, its behavior, and ways of surveying for it and controlling it. Once it enters the wood, the tissue of the tree, it essentially is in its own little vault. It has its protective wood around the beetle so that chemicals will not penetrate the wood and kill the insect. The insect essentially is protected by the host that it's destroying. At this point in time with the research we've done now, we've handed the program the best available techniques that are known to science. Sometimes they may seem a little crude still cutting down and chipping trees, um, but this is the most effective strategy we have right now success stories we had in Chicago where we've eliminated the beetle illustrate how effective those tools are. In 1998, the city of Chicago was one of the first American cities to be struck by the Asian longhorn beetle. The infestation was limited to the Ravenswood neighborhood and was caught early. The city took immediate action, cutting down the affected trees and replanting diverse species. Today, Ravenswood looks like the Asian longhorn beetle had never been there. I think I was going to grab a bite to eat, and on the rear view mirror of the outside of the vehicle was this big black and white beetle. Gene Schulter is the Ravenswood alderman. The mayor said, you know, we got a huge problem on our hands, and we really need to reach out to the people. Let's have a press conference jointly uh, together to say how we're going to be handling this problem in the city of Chicago. Steve Bailina was the city forester who supervised the city's action. The mayor was briefed by the authorities, that is to say, both federal and state. There was no method available to inoculate the trees and make these bugs go, insects go away, that they had to come down. And Joe McCarthy down was the man on the ground for the city. I think by and large, uh, the people understood why we were doing it. We were cutting trees to save trees, kind of a greater good. So each step of the way, we would either have press conferences in the meantime and alerting the, the residents about what was going on. We were able to go down single streets and start basically clear cutting those trees that were infested. So you could, within a very short period of time, look down a street that was once tree-lined 
And by the end of that day, all those trees that were infected being removed. But cutting the trees down wasn't the end. The city of Chicago replanted the neighborhood with diverse species. And 10 years later, Ravenswood is a beautiful tree-lying neighborhood again. We replanted a variety. Diversification is key. We all must stand on guard in terms of the possibility of new invasive species attacking our environment. But with professionalism, competence, and the right direction, I think we will ultimately prevail. Chicago's infestation was found quickly and controlled quickly. Today, you'd never know it happened. But Worcester's problem is much bigger and more complicated. With Asian longhorn beetle, the only strategy that we have for eradication is to remove infested trees. You cannot treat for this pest and kill the insect in the tree because Asian longhorn beetle tunnels into the heart of the tree. But what would it mean to Worcester to cut down over 25,000 trees affected by Asian longhorn beetles? The loss of trees really means something to everybody. And uh, you don't have to be a big time environmentalist to get this message. All you have to do is drive down some of the streets that don't have any more trees and see the whole difference of your lifestyle. To see the animal life that's impacted and the birds and squirrels and all that. You see the stock nakedness. You see the shade trees gone. And then you start thinking about this canopy. This canopy of trees that goes from here all the way through all of New England, all the way up to Maine. And this little beetle goes from tree to tree to tree and could actually devastate the whole maple industry, the whole identification of New England. People come here to see our trees. The tourism industry is only one part of New England's way of life that would be devastated if the Asian longhorn beetle spread beyond the city. Maple syrup, paper, furniture, timber. All of these industries depend on the very forests that the beetle would destroy. The people of Worcester knew the path of destruction left by the beetle in their city had to be stopped before it decimated the entire Northeast. You know, I'm convinced that people have gone the extra mile to try to look at ways other than cutting down trees, but if uh, there's no chemical or treatment uh, protocol available to kill the beetles, you know, there's really no alternative. So it's trying to identify the trees as quickly as possible and, and take care of it and then replant. The solution to Worcester's Asian longhorn beetle infestation was science-based and totally clear. To protect the New England forest, trees within the quarantine area that were infested with Asian longhorn beetle and those that soon would be had to come down. But it was a decision that took some by surprise. I'm overwhelmed. I usually walk in the morning and I can't believe the change in the neighborhood. We don't have any trees. It won't be the same. It just won't be the same. We knew they were going to go and, and we know they need to go. But uh, it's still very sad. It was clear the trees had to come down. We don't make a move without having permission slips where the, the, the homeowner has signed off or the city has signed off that this tree has been observed to either have the beetle or be a host species that can be removed. So when people um, have an opportunity to talk to me, sometimes they want to vent about the government, you know, bad government, they want to do that. Uh, they took all my trees down. And, and I, I try to raise some rationalization to them so they understand why your tree had to come down. But the reality is if we don't aggressively address the issue of the longhorn beetle, we risk the infestation of the whole hardwood forest in the Northeast. And the, that's devastating to our environment, to our, our water uh, uh, sources, which are uh, absolutely critical to uh, people's homes and their day-to-day -day existence and businesses. What's important to remember is these trees were doomed. They were already infested with insects. There's not a way to kill them once they're in the tree. And these trees were going to die anyway. You know, if we just go out and get mad, we accomplish absolutely nothing. Uh, finger pointing doesn't resolve the problem. It doesn't do a damn thing for anybody. So we can point all the fingers we want. At the end of the day, we've got long beetles going through our trees and destroying our, our, uh, our tree canopy. We're 
focusing in on eradicating the problem here so every other community in New England, New York, the Northeast, Eastern Canada doesn't face the same tra tragedy and trauma that Worcester is facing. Well, Harry Truman once said, the only thing that's new in this world is the history you don't know. Uh, we have faced challenges like the Asian longhorn beetle as it relates to our, our urban forest. The, uh, the hurricane, I think, of 1938, uh, the ice storm of the 1920s, the tornado of 1953 wiped out huge swaths of trees. And what people did was take action in putting together a sustained plan for replanting and as a result uh, we've got a city that has got a lot of trees and parks uh, that people can enjoy and with this crisis that we have it's our turn it's our responsibility to engage in the same type of proactive sustained planting and that's what we're going to do. There's an awful lot of optimism in terms of looking to the future the frustration that we have with losing our trees has been channeled into things like going out and creating a tree planting effort. Worcester Tree Initiative uh, was a brainchild of Lieutenant Governor Tim Murray, who is from Worcester, Massachusetts, and Congressman Jim McGovern. I think that people, by and large, recognize that if a tree was infested, it had to go. Absolutely had to go. And I, I think that there's a certain New England resiliency came to bear when people agreed to do what had to be done. Some people who lost a very large and mighty tree are replacing it with a flowering tree. So they're, they're changing their look. And we've also been able to now educate old and young in the importance of trees, the importance of taking care of them, the importance of eradicating of this beetle in this whole situation. So we've got everybody working in the right direction and that's why it's gonna be so successful. And I think that this community has responded beautifully. What we're gonna do is for the next five years, plant 30,000 trees. I think when you plant a tree, you make a statement that we we believe in this community and we're here to stay for the long term. We got people involved. We got the average citizen involved. We got the kids in the high schools and the grammar schools involved. I have to say that there have been a number of local uh, citizens and politicians who've risen to the task and who have been great, strong advocates for the program, for educating the public. No matter where I go, I take the, some flyers, I always have some in my purse, and I pass them around and I tell people, look, this is what the holes look like. Look at them. Pass them around to your kids. You know, you're, you're not only helping yourself, but the, you're helping the government because they need to know where these beetles are being found. We look out of my front window and I see my maple tree. And so I see all the beautiful colors right here. And they, those, are, those may be gone. So if we don't do something about this, uh, that could happen. And that scares the living heck out of me. And just uh, seeing my children and my grandchildren grow up without this beauty, without this thing that I took for granted all of my life, uh, being endangered now by this beetle is something that um, really scares me, really scares me. We do have to take care of our community and our environment. We have to understand that what we do is going to carry us forward for generations to come. And it's important that we do it well and that we do it right and that we do it together. This is not an inconspicuous bug. It's an inch to an inch and a half long, glossy black with white spots, has antenna as long as its body. If you think you see something remotely like that, call your local authorities. This could happen in some any other place in the whole country. It may be in some other place. And it may be uh, brewing and it may be damaging trees and no one is aware of it because they don't realize how serious it is or they just think of it as such another, of just another bug. Humans are the biggest reason that the insect is being spread around. And humans brought it here to Worcester. And humans right now are the biggest threat from other parts of this country. A, a real important thing for people to remember is that we don't know in what wood pile uh, that beetle might be hiding. So don't take any wood, don't take any brush, don't take any sticks uh, up to your camp or up to your vacation or in your trailer, uh, because all you're doing is moving that insect, they're getting a free ride. So you gotta be very vigilant. You wanna buy firewood where you're going to burn it. Uh, you want to make sure that firewood hasn't been transported. One thing that uh, we've learned here, and hopefully other communities will learn from this experience as well, is, is that when they are engaging in active tree replanting efforts to make sure that they've got that tree species diversification, 
which makes you less susceptible to an infestation like what we've had here. The whole thing about Worcester and the reason I want to spread this information is I don't want any other city to have to suffer. And I do mean suffer the way our city is suffering. Worcester is doing its part to stop the Asian longhorn beetle here, and that's essential. Uh, and the rest of us owe the community here a deep debt of gratitude. A little over a year after the beetle was first spotted in Worcester, over 25,000 trees have been brought down. 66 square miles in and around Worcester remain quarantined. To date, the beetle has not been found elsewhere. But the threat from Asian longhorned beetle and other invasive pests continues. And those who value our trees and forests are working harder than ever to protect them.